Spatchcock versus whole smoked turkey. Is there a difference on a pellet grill? Hey, this is Ricer from Dead Broke Barbecue Nation and welcome back to the channel. But if you're new here, we try to help you enhance and amplify your backyard barbecue fun. Like a lot of you, I have cooked several whole turkeys and I've even cooked a few spatchcocks on my Weber kettle. Today, I'm gonna see if there's actually a difference. So let's go, Brandon. We're gonna amplify some backyard barbecue fun. For both of these turkeys, I'm using the same seasonings. For the brine, I'm using PS Seasonings Tipsy Tom. And everything you need to cook a turkey is right in this box. You got your Ziploc bag, you got your Tipsy Tom brine, and for the outside on the skin, you got some Cockadoodle Brew Rub. For the brine, you just take one quart of water, boil it up, add your seasoning pack, boil it up, let it simmer for about five minutes, add three more quarts of cold water, and go to the fridge and grab two of your favorite beers. You need to cool this brine down, so throw it in the fridge, and once it reaches around 40-ish degrees, then you can start brining this turkey. And today I'm using two brine buckets. Shove the breast in first, and then fill it up with the brine. Take your divider and make sure that the whole bird is submerged. Then put the bird back in the fridge and let it brine for 12 to 24 hours. To spatchcock a turkey, it's pretty simple. You're just cutting out the spine, but you wanna make sure that you have a good heavy duty kitchen shears. Cause those bones, they're pretty thick. Just take your knife and split that breast a little bit, smush it down and you'll feel that bone crack because you want this turkey to lay flat in the cooker. On the spatchcock, I'm coating both sides of that bird and on the whole turkey, I'm throwing a little bit of extra seasoning in that cavity. Now that I got them covered up pretty evenly, we're gonna put them back in the fridge for another 12 hours. That's gonna help us dry up that skin a little bit so we can get a little bit crispier bite. I'm finally at the point where we can get these turkeys cooked and today I'm using my Lone Star Grills pellet grill. Simple enough, press my button to ignite it and I'm running this today at 300 degrees. For today's cook, I'm using 100% cherry pellets from Lumberjack. Open up our lid and let all that smoke out of the pit, but this pit never stops smoking. You're gonna hear that afterburner kicking in, and that's when we're starting to actually get that flow of that smoke out of the chamber. Pit's leveled out really nice. We're pushing right around that 300 degrees. Let's get these turkeys under some smoke. We're gonna get our hole in first. And we're going right over on this right hand side. On the Lone Star grills, the fire pot is on the right hand side. We're gonna stick our probe in the breast. These are also the needle style that you can get from fireboard. Same idea with the spatchcock. We're gonna put the dark meat on the right hand side. Get this probe through. And we'll take that needle and get it kind of placed right in here. I'll run them for about an hour and then we'll check and see what our temperature is reading on both of these turkeys. I'm a little over an hour into this cook. Let's check out these turkeys. Now I melted up a little butter. We wanna get that on the outside of that skin, but first let's just go ahead and take a look. The skin is starting to develop a nice golden brown color to it. One thing I noticed right away that the spatchcock is about 96, 95 degrees and the whole turkey is at 83. Obviously that makes sense because that spatchcock is right tight to the grate. Take the butter and we're just gonna sprinkle a little bit on the outside of this skin. Try to achieve that whole beautiful golden brown. I'm gonna pull these once that breast starts reading 162 degrees. The dark meat, you wanna make sure that that runs up to 175 degrees internal. And if it goes a little bit over, it's not gonna hurt. You don't always have to use butter. Sometimes I use duck fat or Pam to crisp up that skin. But butter, everything's better with butter. I got two and a half hours in. Let's check out these big birds. Well, I certainly really like that golden brown color. I'm gonna add a little bit more of the butter to the outside, but I really like this color. I don't want them to get too dark, so we'll just tent them up with a little bit of lumen foil after this butter has a chance to bake in. But this is a real nice, beautiful golden brown. And that skin is actually starting to crisp up just a little. If you can see, the spatchcock is running right around 150. 
138 degrees and the hole is right around 131. So obviously the spatchcock one is gonna finish a little earlier. So if you're in a hurry, spatchcock your turkey. But for this taste test, I'll put it in the PK100 and we'll hold it until we're ready to start carving them up. The spatchcock turkey finished about a half an hour earlier than the whole turkey, but this pit does have about a 10 degree difference from right to left. So finishing a half an hour earlier, if it was just the spatchcock in there, I think it's gonna finish about an hour earlier. We're at about five hours now. And this turkey's reading the internal temperature of 162 degrees. This turkey is a little darker than normal, but it's still not that bad. I do actually like the golden brown from the cockadoodle do. Like the spatchcock, I'm gonna put this one in the PK and I'll meet you at the cutting board. Spatchcock versus hole. These are finally done and it's time to give them a taste test. But before I do that, I wanna thank all my Patreons and people that have joined the membership. Join the Dead Broke Barbecue Facebook group too. We have a really nice dark golden brown color on this skin. It's probably not showing up as well on film as it is live, but this looks pretty dang good to me. Got a little dark on this whole one. Next time I smoke a whole turkey on the Lone Star Grill's pellet grill, I'll turn it up to 325 degrees and put the aluminum foil on it a little bit earlier, but still it's turned out pretty dang good. Start by cutting off leg here we certainly have some really good juice in it wow slice one piece of this white meat off because we're going to try this now i didn't inject these turkeys but we still got some decent moisture in this breast we'll cut this leg off on the hole now i will say on this leg right here we've got a tremendous amount of juice that's really loaded right there get it off so I'm happy with that. And on this one, I didn't inject either, but let's cut off a little bit of breast meat on this one too. It almost looks like there might be a little bit more moisture on the whole smoked turkey. Obviously you can see this is pulled up well. We'll slice off a little bit of the breast off the spatchcock. It's very good and I really like the flavor of the Tipsy Tom brine that I used. Now I'll try the whole smoked breast. Let's see how that is. It tastes exactly the same, but I can tell that there's more moisture in this whole one. And maybe just a little bit more tender. Now we'll get into this, some of this dark meat, and I'm gonna try some of the skin on the spatchcock. I'll say for a smoked turkey, this skin is pretty dang crispy. And last but not least, let's try the dark meat and some skin off the whole turkey. On the whole one, and it could be the way it was cooked, the skin on this dark meat on that drumstick, it is not as crispy. So what did I learn? The biggest difference that I see between these two cooking styles is that if you're in a hurry, do a spatchcock. If you're gonna try this at home, inject this breast with some butter, you'll thank me for it for sure, because you'll have twice the amount of moisture in the white meat. In today's cook, in my opinion, the whole turkey won the battle, even if it ended up a little bit darker. But I'm not gonna say there's anything wrong with doing a spatchcock turkey on a pellet grill. I just don't think that it retains the same amount of moisture, but this crispy skin, pretty impressive. Well, that's all I got. Roll the nation. It's nice on the bottom. All oh, these flies, I tell you. Why did the Lord make them? Let's go Brandon. I'm gonna start calling these flies Brandon. <laughs>